Yes, Declan, congratulations as this crowd sing Rice Rice Baby as you walk off the pitch. Three. <laughs> gets me every time. Three points, a goal and an assist. That couldn't have gone any better for you and your team today. Yeah, I think um, I think you see in the first half it was it's domination. Should it, we could have been four or five if I'm being honest with you. I missed the sitter and I was fuming to be honest. Um, I couldn't let it go and I knew there was an opportunity for me today to score assists and uh, even for my goal then, you know, I was back in my own half and I just I just sensed it. Um, Bournemouth players right on their feet and just kept going and going and arrived in a position that I'd done quite frequently today and goal assist and three points is, um, yeah, after speaking yesterday, it's, it's what we needed. Yeah, when we spoke yesterday, you said that you actually prefer assisting to scoring goals. It's seven goals, nine assists now. Do you still prefer assisting? <laughs> do you know what? I, I do like assisting. It just feels good for some reason. Um, I feel, I'm sure all the top players in the world will say that as well when they assist. Like, it's just such a good feeling, um, especially for me, because I don't get to do it much. Um, but look, I'm delighted. It was, like I said, it was a big result because they've been in some top form. They're a really good team. Uh, big respect to them. But we knew today it was it was business and we uh, had to handle it. Yeah, you talked about the amount of chances you had before you won that penalty. Did it feel like it was going to be one of those days? Uh, yeah, it can do. Um, you look back at the Villa game the other week when we had four or five in the first half and second half is a bit cagey. Still think we can improve in the second half, um, become a bit of a basketball match and that's not our game. Uh, could have could have been a bit more composed. They caused a bit of chaos and we caused our own, caused our own damage really at times. Um, but to win 3-0, get it over the line, um, you know, now leads into another big one next week and we're fully focused. It didn't look like a huge moment like it was the way Saka just rolled that penalty in so coolly either, did it? Yeah, you know, fair, fair, fair play to him. You know, ever since the Euros, uh, when he missed the penalty, I think his mindset on penalties and the way he practices them and the way he now takes them in different positions and different spots, um, full credit to him because that takes courage and uh, he's been top of them for us. Well, look, you're four points clear at the top of the Premier League table, potentially two games away from winning the Premier League title. How are you managing the nerves, the pressure, the excitement, all of it? Do you know what? I think this year, I think, obviously I wasn't here last year, but I think this year I can sense that we're just embracing it. You know, obviously, like you said, Man City, well, they're a machine. You know, they, they win most of their games, um, but we can only focus on us. And, you know, we have been doing that in recent weeks. We've had an unbelievable 2024. I think the record that we've had is just out of this world. Um, so look, anything can happen in football. Surprises happen, uh, miracles happen. And uh, yeah, look, we're, we're obviously um, two games to go. We've just got to stay focused. Well done today. You are the man of the match. Thank you. Won this trophy, but another step closer today with just two games to go. Just how big a test was that for Arsenal, Martin? And how well did they come through it? They did well, actually. I thought the second half, there was um, some nervy moments. Credit to Bournemouth. They started passing the ball. They were playing with much more expression, much more freedom. They came at Arsenal. But again, you know, they showed that professionalism, that game management, which was really important. And I thought um, Declan Rice sort of summed that up, really, once he'd done what, everything he needed to do, putting fires out all over the pitch. He went off and then grabbed his own goal. Well, Havertz is about to join us. As you can see Hi, Kai Havertz is coming out to join us. You, you can hear the cheers for a player who's been so influential in this title race. Kai, good to speak to you. Just how tough a game was, was that to play in? How well do you think the team navigated their way through it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, was a tough game. I think we had lots of chances in the, in the first half especially. But, um, yeah, we didn't manage to score them. And then it was tough the second half. I mean, they have a, have a good team. Fair play to them. I think they, they played quite well. So, um, yeah, I mean, at the end, we are very happy about the three points and the three goals as well. I have to ask you about the, the penalty as well, because Mark Travers, their goalkeeper, was complaining that you sort of dangled a leg in there. H how did you see, see it? I mean, uh, I haven't seen the replay, but um, I think it touches me. I think you see it closely from, from this angle. He commits and then, there, and then the contact. I mean, I think it's a penalty, yeah. but... You know, you're a clever player. You know that he's, he's, left, he's, he's left himself exposed. What did you think, Kai? I mean, in the situation, I felt the contact and yeah. uh, I went down. That's why, uh, yeah, for me, it's a penalty. And um, I said to the goalkeeper as well, um, you touched me. So I think he under understood as well yeah. on the pitch. So, 
maybe it's not that clear, but um, I think you can give it for sure. You're playing fantastically well at the moment, and you're really enjoying your football. You have a great relationship with Saka and Declan Rice. Is, it, is this is this the best we've seen you in this run of run of form? Is this your best form of your career? Because you're playing fantastically well. Yeah, thank you. I mean, um, I just enjoy it on the pitch right now. It's so nice. I mean, I have so many good players behind me, and um, yeah, it's just fun, you know, to play as a number nine as well. I really enjoy that role, and. Uh, I know it's still two more games to play and we're going to give everything. I'm going to give everything and hopefully we can um, yeah, enjoy the last two games and uh, win those games and then we see where we are going. You said it was fun. How much are you enjoy, enjoying playing under this manager? How, how has he really helped your development? Yeah, I mean, I enjoy every second. Um, I mean, he learned me so many good things, um, especially at the beginning when it was tough for me. Um, um, I'm so glad um, I, I'm, I'm here and... Um, yeah, everyone was uh, was on my side. Everyone stick to me, even though maybe the first couple of months were hard. But uh, sometimes in football, um, it's well, not it's not easy. Just explain that the first few months, because now it looks like you're really at home. I think you're playing your best football of your career. Maybe by Leverkusen you were a different class there, but I think now you feel at home. Why is that? Is it because of the support that you get around you, and you're giving back now for that support? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, um, I work, I work hard, um, obviously. Um, and um, for me, I'm, I'm a guy. For me, it's not easy to go um, into a new team with new, new teammates. I'm maybe some, sometimes kind of a shy guy. So um, it's not easy. I mean, you, you all know it. To go in a different team uh, with different, different manager and um, different players is sometimes tough. And um, I mean, I came from Chelsea. That uh, didn't make it, made it easier for me as well. Um, but I knew that my time was coming, and I just uh, stick stick to my plan. Everyone was helping me, as I said. The manager was was helping me a lot, um, and the players as well. Um, but yeah, I'm so happy to be, here and also the fans they have been unbelievable. You, you don't give a lot away with your body language, but I can see now the work rate is there. The, the, your ability in the air as well has surprised me. How good you are! You never rarely do you not win a header. You know, it's a real strength for yours, but you ghost into these positions. I think, I mean, uh, I needed maybe to change my game a bit. I think when I came from Germany, uh, I felt straight away it's not that easy to, to survive in the league with so many tough players. Um, so I, mean, and I needed to adapt my game as well. Um, I think I did it quite well, and um, right now I really enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy having contact with my opponents. I enjoy aerial uh, duels as well, so um, it's diff for sure a different uh, type of football over here, but it's fun it's coming out in your play, you can see that. You can I it. ask you about Bakayo Saka as well? He obviously scored the, the penalty that you won. How impressed were you with just how cool he was, given the, the pressure of the situation in this title race? Uh, yeah, I think this guy is unbelievable. I think he, he shows it every week. Um, I, I think he's 21, 22 right now. It's, I think I've never seen a player like this before, and um, I think England can can be so happy to have him. Um, he's an unbelievable player, unbelievable guy, and um, they are so hungry every day. If you see him in training, is uh, special. So yeah, and then to score goals like this in those circumstances are is, is brilliant. I think. Uh. England, England versus Germany in the final. Then I hope Berlin. so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we know what happens there. Thanks for coming there. out to talk yeah. to us. Well done on the win Thank today. You so much. Thank Thanks, Kai. So well done, mate. Well well see you. Brilliant. Good to see you. Yeah, so influential in, in yeah. this title race. You both said you, you think you're, he's playing the best football of his career. Well, yeah. Why do you think he's been able to, to transform his career in the Premier League here? There was obviously a brilliant player there in Germany, but it just didn't happen at Chelsea. No, but that, that's... I think it did happen at Chelsea in spells. You know, and he won the Champions League at Chelsea. We have to forget he made the difference. His name will be forever in the folklore of Chelsea Football Club because of the, the, the role he played. And he played his best football in that role. He had, he had Timo Werner to his left and sometimes Mason Mount or someone else to his right. And he, 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 he was good. Do you know, but, but this you, team, I think, was better than but, even but that I, team. I think timing, where you go to, of course, he was successful at Chelsea. I always found, though, Joe, that it was a, it was a difficult changing room mm -hmm. to go into at Chelsea. You know, especially a young player. It's not easy for that adaptation for everybody. He's explained it very well there, you know, yeah. but now he feels at home.
Mm. He's a part of the, the, the furniture here, and, and he loving the role. And then suddenly you see the performance that comes with it. He's, he's actually feeling much more probably a part yeah. of this club. He's only been here a short while. I think, I think continuity and stability is the key. He's coming to a club, and, and me, well, Martin's here all the time, but me, when I come and do Arsenal games, first of all, I can feel great energy around the stadium, the fans can eat them. You feel like there's, there's no ever whisper of a change of manager, director, of football players coming and going. You just continuity, stability. And when you're a player like Kai, he said he's a shy guy there, and you come into a place that's settled, I think that would, you'll thrive then. So I think, I think that's what he was trying to explain. He's in a really settled environment, and you're just seeing the best of him. And he spoke so glowingly of Saka, and that's what yeah. you do, isn't it? When, you, when I look back at the, the 204 team 20 years ago, we talked about it at the start. So many great players that you point to, you draw off one another, and you think in the end someone will get us mm. across the line. And today it was that moment. The penalty was a nervy moment. Yeah. And Saka stepped up and yeah. just took it, no Sometimes problem. Sometimes it's just... Yeah, at the Emirates, 1-0 to Arsenal at the break, who, as it stands, are going four points clear of Manchester City. Martin Keown and Joe Cole watching with me. The Gunners got the goal from the penalty spot after Travers uh, took down Kai Havertz, Joe. The keeper felt that Havertz had left his leg out. What I can see think? why the keeper, there was protest, but it's a penalty. You're a young keeper, you've done fantastically well. Once you're in that situation, you commit and you're not going to get it, and your leg is that extended out, you leave, Havertz has bought it, but he knows what he's doing. A good goalie there, Martin, I don't know what you think, but a, Martin, a, a Neuer or someone would, would have kid Havertz. It's a shame and because he, the youngster you know, did really well, didn't he? Ariola's saying the same yeah, thing, he's left he, his leg in there. But. Exactly, he just needs to stay on his feet and he puts the leg out. And he, he, until that point, actually, he's done magnificently well. It's only his third game for Bournemouth. Uh, but there he showed his inexperience and Havertz yeah, took advantage of the situation. Yeah, 16th Premier League goal for Bukayo Saka, the, the coolest person in here. He was so calm, Joe. You could feel the tension building because Arsenal missed a, a huge amount of chances and when you're out there and you're missing chances in the game where you're expected to win you suddenly think to yourself is it going to be one of them days where it doesn't happen for us so Saka was cool as cool as anything and just slotted it away were Bournemouth lucky to still have 11 players on the pitch Martin I thought so a little bit um, at the time I, I, we were together and I jumped up straight away that studs went up of course it's Saka so we're all extra concerned and if you just look at it from there that's high that's your medial ligament and we're lucky that Saka has got got to his feet. But I was a little bit surprised that VAR didn't really have a, a close look at that. So anyway, I don't like seeing players getting sent off, but he was lucky there. They did sure. have a look, but, but obviously they didn't feel that it met the threshold for a red card because they can't intervene in a yellow yeah, draw. At, at that point in the game, this is where a referee's got to use his, his nous because Bournemouth were not getting close to anyone. And, and, and you're, you're, you're looking to get tight, you're looking to get tight. He was reckless, he was rash, and he was lucky to stay on the pitch. You cannot go in stud showing knee height nowadays and expect so I think Bournemouth got away with one there. Well, it was starting to look like... Half-time at the Emirates, 1-0 to the Arsenal. David, that will ring familiar to you. 61% <laughs> possession to the Gunners compared to 39 of Bournemouth. I mean, it's been thoroughly dominant as far as the hosts are concerned. 16 shots, which is the joint most they've had in the first half of a Premier League game this season. Only five on target. One of them, of course, including a penalty that was given on 42 minutes. Perfect time for Bukaya Saka to step up, really, from 12 yards. Let's have a look at the penalty incident. David, was it the right call from David Coote, the referee? I think so. Um, I think Havertz got the penalty. You know, I think when you look at this, the goalie comes out, he doesn't get the ball. You know, so he's dangled his foot out and then Havertz sees that and takes advantage of it. You know, he's that gamesmanship a little bit. You know, I've done it in World Cups where that's happened to me. And, yeah. You know, so I'm all for that. You know, if you don't get the ball when you make an effort, and you're leaving yourself open to the striker. As Mark Travers, I mean, is, is he risking it by going with his going yeah. in with his feet? Yeah, and, and if he doesn't get anything on the ball, then he's in trouble because his his, his foot is out. Yeah, you know, and, and it's a target for Havertz. A foul by Travers, or was Havertz being cute? Havertz being cute. Yeah. Quite, there's no, I don't think there's actual challenge there from from. Travers, I think it's more Havertz just dragging his foot because you can see that he, he doesn't tackle him in, in any stretch. He doesn't get anywhere near him, but it's Havertz. If you look at it, I think it's his, his left foot, I think it is. Mm -hmm. He almost just leaves it there. like So the, the other one skips over the defender and he leaves the foot there just enough just to get that little contact there yeah. and then he goes over. And, that, and the, you back to the, the, the question is how much contact is enough contact? But mm -hmm. I think once the referee had given that decision, because there was a little bit of contact there, I don't think he can go back and, yeah. and yeah. change it. OK, well, I mentioned Saka stepped up for a high-pressure penalty. What was his execution like here? It, when I look at these, I'm, and I see him just pass it down the side of the goalkeeper, I'm looking, is he looking at the ball there or the goalkeeper? And he's actually looking at the ball. So it's not the best of penalties, 
but it's gone in. Oh, not the, the cleanest of strikes, I should no. say. But it's the goalkeeper doesn't really make it difficult for him because he doesn't really do anything. It almost just yeah. kind of stays there. He doesn't make a decision to go left or right. But yeah. from Saka, high pressure penalty, it's it's a good goal. Yeah, 16th goal in the Premier League, 20 in all competitions. First Arsenal player to do that since Pierre Emerick Aubameyang in 2019-2020. Uh, uh, let's have a look at the chances that Arsenal created yeah. up until that point. They've been getting a lot of joy down the right side, Darren. Yeah, they have. I mean, the way the game started and the way Arsenal certainly um, came out the blocks, I thought, well, this could be a cricket score at some point. But to be fair, Bournemouth stayed in it. But on this right-hand side, I mean, everything's come down this right-hand side. Sakaria, I think they waited too long to give him that pass. And then by the time the finish came in, it wasn't really on. Um, so they kind of run out of space. This was another good chance. Again, Havertz just putting it into a really intelligent area. Ben White, really good run, really clever play. He almost waits, holds his ground a little bit, recognises where the space is. Look, little flick. <laughs> but when it comes in here as well, you're thinking, oh, here comes the goal. Bournemouth defend really well. Again, this is a lovely little pass from Ben White. There's not really a lot of space there, but a little clip in behind um, Otaro, who's had a bit of a tough first half. Again, they get in there. Don't quite capitalise, but you knew at some point, if the, the more they keep doing it, the more they're going to get opportunities. I mean, Saliba here, Saka, leaving that space in, behind Atara again. And he does really well because he's composed, drops the shoulder, but again, another good save. And you, are, you just start to think, David, is it going to be one of those days where they're not going to yeah. score? Where, where he's saving everything, you know, and I think we just need a little bit more composure on the actual finish. You know, like we get into like great positions and then just hammering the ball mm. instead of like side footing it into the corners. But, um, yeah, it was getting frustrating, but then, obviously, the penalty's made it a lot more relaxing. Yeah, but, David, despite Arsenal's dominance, there have been a couple of nervy moments... Yeah. ..which have yeah. involved Gabriel. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's been a couple where, you know, he's, he's, his control's decent there, and then he's, it's, it's that little lapse in concentration on the final execution of the pass. And then this one, he gets caught in two binds and then gets tangled up with his feet. You know, and then Saliba comes comes round and clears up for him. But um, yeah, they're they're the worrying thing. You know, they're they're mistakes that don't need to be made. You yeah, they're self-inflicted. Yeah, Bournemouth showing they can be dangerous on the counter. Patience has been key then for Arsenal.